hello and welcome to another lesson in our vba programming and in this lesson we are going to add the search functionality to our user form okay we're going to add a search functionality based on your criteria you would want to search your data with it's going to be easy simple and fun okay by now you should be following the tutorial step by step okay but if you haven't watched our previous tutorials we have the links in the video description below you can just check the link and have access to all the tutorials okay and also if you haven't yet subscribed to our channel please just do that and make sure to press the bell icon so that i can receive notifications anytime we upload new tutorials and we also try as much as possible to upload tutorials every single day so that i can't afford to miss any of these tutorials okay so that is that now let's quickly delve right into today's lessons thank you Hello and welcome to another lesson in our VBA programming training and in this lesson we're going to add the search functionality to our user form so let's quickly dive right into that so we go to our VBA training folder I prefer to create a new project for this so just right click go to new Excel you just double press the enter key to launch it you can maximize it you go to file Go to save us. You choose the VBA training folder or whichever folder. The name of the folder is they change the name to project eight. Project eight, perfect. Then you choose this that is macro enable to make sure it's a macro enable workbook. You can then close this now and then we delete this for now. So we go with this, we launch it and minimize this. Perfect. Okay, so we are going to draw a new form. Okay, so let's quickly do that. So you can just uh, select from here to D. Let's say up to a uh, really set here. Okay, so we choose some, uh, okay, this color is kind of good. So from there, Think, uh, just select this from the top and then you expand it a bit like this okay add it a bit this is okay so the top here can be named let's see uh, students data entry form perfect so I would prefer just to select all and then uh, merge and center i would want to change the font to uh, comic sans perfect i would want to bold it and then make it group sorry it's not choosing comic sans perfect use it i would want to make it go up a bit but so i prefer we uh skipping some rows and then squeezing the, the various rows to get what we want so make sure you select the second row press and hold control on the keyboard select the half one sixth one eighth one tenth one twelve then uh, that of the 14 okay that's okay so you just move your cursor here make sure it changes to plus then you squeeze them up a bit get them squeezed like this perfect so we can have this to be our label so we say full name here is going to be something like okay i let's see if we can still uh, decrease it a bit to okay, okay this is okay it should be full name and then this and that okay it should be full name here should be date of birth okay 
to be date of birth, and then uh, this should be a date of admission. And then the next one, we have uh, gender, okay. And the next one, we have class or form. Then moving on, we have uh, father's name. Perfect. We skip here because we're going to use the, the, the column B as our as the name field for entering the data. So we move on to column C as another label column. So you go to father's contacts. And we choose father's hometown. Then we go to uh, mother's name. And we move on to mother's contact. Mother's contact. Then from there, mother's hometown. And finally, uh, address. Okay, perfect. So we've now gotten our label. So just select this, press and hold control on the keyboard. Then you select the rest like that. Just right click, you go to format cells, you go to um, borders. Let's choose this particular color here. Okay. Then let's get a very thin line here okay so i have this have that and have this here and then here should be the dotted ones have that okay perfect uh, okay and click on okay uh, then let's make them grow up a bit then we set the font to what right justify okay, that is okay why don't you change the fonts to Times New Roman? It's okay, perfect. Good. Now let's select the various fields. After selecting the first one, press and hold control on the keyboard. While also select the rest. All right, let's just change the background color to white. Right click, you go to Format Cells. We're going to choose the same format in here. So you have here, here, here is going to be dotted, and then here should be thick now. We got discovered. Perfect. Our form is now or has now taken a shape. Press Control S to save. Now the next line of action is we need our button. Okay, that is the add and save button. We, we, we are going to rename it. It's not going to be submit button any longer. So it's going to be add and save because. We'll be having our search by here and then other buttons here. So we then move it here. So let's go to uh, inserts, go to shapes. We choose this shape and then uh, draw this button here and move it here a bit. Okay. And then uh, expand it a bit. It's okay. Now let's format it and then choose this one. So you can just right click and go to edit text. So you choose add slash save perfect. Okay, just select it. Okay, it's now all selected. I think we can format it appropriately, hold it, make it same time, adjust it this way. And this is okay. Perfect. Form is ready. Good. Now let's rename and then add another another sheet. We have this to be what? Form. Sorry. And then here is going to be our database, okay? Sorry. Perfect. Good. Form and then the database. Now let's format the database table as well. So here we have uh, the full name, okay? Uh, sorry. And the next one we have date of birth. Okay. 
the next one you have date of admission okay the next one we have gender then we have class or form then we have uh, at this name at this name then uh, the next one of the father's name we have father's contact father's contact we have father's hometown we have mother's name and mother's name we have uh, mother's contacts Mother's contact, we have Mother's hometown. We have finally Mother's address. Sorry, not Mother's address, we have address rather. Perfect, it is okay. So we can just uh, adjust them to get everything up and running. And that is okay. Class of form is okay. Father's name is okay. You're going to be a full name here, okay? Father's contact. Mother's, father's hometown. Let's correct this. We have age here. And then we have mother's name. We have mother's contacts. We have mother's uh, as in, uh, hometown and finally address. So we should have 12 columns. Perfect. Now let's format it. Let's give it a background color of uh, this font should be white. We would want to change the font style to Times New Roman and bold it. We would want to center the forms as well. Okay, perfect. That's okay. I think uh, the table is also set. Now, the next line of action is we go ahead and then uh, write our macros. But since we're going to use data mapping for this, I think um, we need to add another rule here. I should have skipped that rule. Then. Not bad. So let's check. The full name is in B3. And then the uh, date of birth is B5. So we have B3 through to what? B13. So we're skipping this. It's going to be odd numbers, right? 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13. Yeah, D, column D. D3, D5, D7, right? D9, D11, D13. Let's go and then add that here to map our data easily. So we have B3, B5, B7, B9, then B11, then B13. Okay, it's imperfect. Now we move on to what? Let's just adjust this one a bit again for this contact, okay? This one down is okay. We have D3, we have D5, we have D7, we have D9, we have D11, and D13. Okay, perfect. Uh, we can just select them and then center them perfectly. I think it's okay. And save our work now. Now, the nice line of action is going to write macros to what? collect data from here sorry from these ranges here store them here you know how to do that right if you like you can pause the video here and try that by yourself but then if you wish you continue following the tutorials as you watch me do it so let's go ahead and do that so to do that we go to developer and then we go to visual basic then uh 
going to add um, a model right so insert in this model okay so when you name our model uh, i will call it sorry data submit perfect so just double click it and then we write our sub routine so it's sub uh, add new data okay perfect now we're going to dimension or declare two variables okay and you know what i'm talking about so it's a dim sorry plus holy oh, shit dim last uh, rule that is the last rule without data okay as what long and the second one that is the columns here this particular columns here here the top row here which is holding our data we're going to map okay which is holding the ranges from the form we are talking of this one okay so we declare that as well to um, so we say dim i'll call it data columns uh, for short data call so as what also long perfect now we are done with our variables declaration now the next line of action is uh, we're going to um, determine the last row without data and quickly what we'll store our data so to do that we've already deemed that the last row without data as long okay so we're going to set it now or assign a value to it so we say what and that is going to be on sheet one where we're going to be taking that data okay where we're going to be taking that particular what data so we say what with sheet one with sheet one we want something to happen so wait and then go to what sorry and with okay perfect with sheet one we want something to happen what do we want to happen so you say what last row you know the last row that is the last the, the row without data okay last row is equal to what one as sorry last row is equal to what sheet two that last row we're going to be determined we are going to determine is going to is on the data sheet let's look at that sorry this is the database sheet okay so supposing we have data here we have data in this row data in this row what that line of code is going to do is it's going to determine the next row without data and then store our data in there that is what i'm talking about okay i explained this several times so right now i think you should understand it better. so it's going to be on sheet two and that is our database sheet okay sheet two dot what dot dot range into brackets now the the column which, which of the column is it going to be in it's going to be in column a so this particular column this particular column okay that's what we're going to be we're going to determine using this but that is a column a rather so we say what the brackets column a sorry a then the range i'll use this random numbers depending upon the size of my data i'll be taking okay into bracket dot end and then into bracket uh excel app it's already chosen for me sorry into bracket excel app so, uh, dot what dot end into bracket excel app just tab it over to get it bracket close dot what rule tab it over again now naturally this line of code should just give us the last rule and that will give us the last row with data okay without adding one to it for now it's going to be what this is going to give us the last row with data but since we can't store data in already in a row which already holds data we need to what add plus one to it so that it skip that one and go to the next row without data so you say what plus one then we get that so we are done setting the last row as this we have assigned value to that and then this will give us the last empty row without what data perfect now we want to use for loop to look through what the various columns and then map our data straightforward you want to use for loop to look through these columns this b3 b5 b7 b9 blah blah to the last one we're going to look through them and then take all this data from here the way we just map it you can see b3 that is full name is going to be here so b3 b5 date of birth let's check it's going to be here b5 date of birth. in that order till the last one so let's just quickly do that minutes so we're going to say that uh, for loop so we say for sorry 
for what for data column talking of that this particular variable that we declare that is the, the rule that is holding the the, the various what uh, ranges from the form okay so for data column equal to one to what sorry to 12 you know sorry to 12 we want something to happen so if you say after calling on the for loop you say what next data then the variable that you call so next data column okay the name of the variable is what data column and then we use for loop so you say what? next and then that particular variable right is that that is how it's done just like sub and then end sub and then uh, with and then end with and then if and then end if this one to four and then next the name of the variable you use in the follow okay so that is that now what we are saying is that for data column this particular columns here this particular columns here which is what one to two of which is equal to what one to two of we want something to happen okay and actually it's also one to two of okay we want something to happen what we want to happen we want to map our data with this single line of code okay so let's just do that we want to say what sheets sheet 2 the data is going to be mapped on sheet 2 okay that is the database sheet dot cells okay, dot cells into bracket which of the cells are we taking we are taking the cells that is the last true okay then the last row variable that is a row without what data okay so we say last row comma then what data column we want to take after determining the last row without data and i want to call on the variable or data column and then prepare its mind that this we want to call on these variables now so that we just all we are going to be taking here full name is going to be under what b3 date of birth is going to be under what b5 date of admission is going to be under what b7 till the end okay so that is that so we say what she two dot cells which of the cells last true without data then after determining that now i want to move and call on this particular variable where it's going to pick our data from the form and then store it for us okay from a data column into brackets dot value the value of that is equal to what dot range i'll explain this dot range into brackets sheet two i'll explain this don't worry sheet two dot dot cells then uh, another bracket open okay then one comma and we call in the data column again into brackets dot value then bracket close dot value again we don't memorize these things what we do is that we just try to understand what each and every was the name variable or range or sheet name or cells what they are they maybe they, 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 they are referred to okay try to understand that now, what we are saying is this for the data column that is column 1 to 12 here these columns which are 1 to 12 we want to do something okay let me be here what we want to do we want to map our data why is the data going to be mapped it's going to be mapped on sheet 2 so we say what sheet 2 dot cells on sheet two, where in a particular cells, which of the cells, the last row without data, that is why we call this last row because we've already assigned the last row without data to this particular variable called last row. So we call it which one is going to determine where the full name is going to be, where the date of birth is going to be, and that is going to be that is going to be what the, the variable called data column because that is what is holding that particular row data column and the values dot range. So it's so what dot value the values of this particular two variables are coming from what dot range this should have been what sheet one dot range but because we already said what with sheet one so because we don't want to be mentioning sheet one sheet one sheet one we use what with sheet one so wherever we have sheet one again we just use the dots that is the range without having to mention the sheet one again okay here should have been what sheet one dot range but that is where the data is coming from okay so we say what sheet 2 dot cells we're going to map our data on sheet 2 which of the cells the last true and then the, the, the data column variables okay dot value the values of these particular two variables are coming from what dot that is sheet 1 dot range into back a sheet 2 dot cells it should be taken from what uh, what's the name when it's taken from sheet 1 then it's moved straight to what sheet 2 and then start putting them in the, the first column so this determine the first column okay that is a column 1 
then after that it will follow this particular variable's what uh, was in a declaration which says what hey this range but this particular range uh, b3 make sure you hold the full name here so it is going to do that for us to hold all the full names for the various uh, data we take in and then b5 we to hold what the date of birth okay so this is what that is what this particular variable is doing here that is a data column so we are assigning those values here to what this we are assigning those values on the sheet one on the sheet one here we are ass assigning all those values on the sheet one to what this particular range is here we have that is why we declare those two variables there like that so this one holds the last row without data and this one holds the various columns at the top at the top this one sorry this one here b5 b uh, sorry b3 b5 b7 b9 b11 and then all that that is what it holds so that is that so anytime we call on that it knows that whenever i take the data from what this particular range i'll be placing it here but well, that is what the data column variable is doing for us there so you understand so with that so we have just assigned all those values from what the form to what the data sheet so that is that so now with this line of code we have just mapped our data straightforward without any problem with our history so now if we should just go there and then write or enter something and then trigger our button it should it should store it on our data on our on our database sheet for us let's try that and see so we go to this and then we go so let's use here to say okay right now Ashida. date of birth okay let me just uh go to someone date of admission let's put in some and then with the gender and then the class form i would want to Valid use some list here, so I'll just click inside gender. Uh, and I go to data with data validation and I choose this. And then this drop down and choose list with the gender. We say equal to what male, comma, then what female. Okay, perfect. Holy shit. Oh, okay. Sorry, let's see. A named range you specified cannot be found. Okay, let's see. Let me just take off the equal sign. So it's a male, you know, female. Perfect. Let's see how it's going to be now. Perfect. So with this, we have if you choose this, you have the male, you choose this, you have the female. Perfect. And then here, we want to have the various classes, okay, from KG to whatever class. So you make sure this particular range is selected. You go to data. You move on to data validation you validate you choose list okay uh list oh sorry you choose list and then you use a kg1 okay so you say what kg1 comma kg2 comma kg3 comma sorry hey p1 comma p2 comma p3 comma p4 this is just a demonstration okay this is okay i think you have to pay for it. it's okay so we have that you can just choose this if you like and add more just use comma to separate them and then all that e1 okay so far this name is what uh yeah yeah is uh perfect father's contact i'm gonna put some random numbers father's hometown mother's name Ajazina. Mother's contact, some random numbers. Mother's hometown. Uh, oh, hey. Perfect. Address H E slash sixty seven. Now let's right click on this particular button. We go to assign macro, and we use our add new data name and then click on it. Now if we trigger this, it should take everything and store it here for us, straightforward without any problem, without any stress. Let's just select this and then try to center them perfectly. Go home and then we center it perfect. So you can see that our data is now taken without any problem, without any stress. With just one line of code, we have just mapped our data. 
excellent one of mapping our data perfect so i think you understand first of all we just declare these two variable we have done this several times if we talk of data mapping this shouldn't be a problem now i hope it's understood perfect now after submission okay after submission of data from the form here we need to clear the form immediately so i think you can do that as well so let's quickly go to the back end or the source code and do that okay so we go to and say well there and after submission we want to say what uh sheet one sorry you know the date the the the, the form is sheet one right so take note of that sheet one dot range which of the ranges let me type it over and then open the bracket down then i determine the ranges okay so let me go to the form the form here okay uh we have B3, B5. So we have B3 through to what? B13. So we wouldn't be separating them one by one like B5, B7, B9. No, we just take this through to this, okay? Using a colon to do that. So we say B3 through to what? B13. So let's figure that out and then add it. So we say what? Range. Then we use a. We say what? B3 through to what? B13, okay? Then this close the bracket dot what clear content tab it over and you can just copy this and then edit okay control c to copy and then control v to paste so we have b3 through so this one will be d3 now sorry d3 through to what d13 as well okay so that is also this d3 through to what d13 so let's just go and check that out now now let's just edit this we don't want to let's just edit this and say salis siraj then it's going to be male okay the class d3 siraj Munir, the father's name, okay. And then Rahma, or oh, Dr. Rahma, let me put it that way. Perfect. We should trigger this now. It's submit and then clear the form for us. Prepare for another data input. Okay, let's check our leadership. So we have that as well here, okay. Let's just format this as well. So all our data will always be in what? Oh, what's happening here? Okay, okay. Let's just have this. Okay, so let's try to center all of them at once. Perfect. Okay, it is okay. Good. So I think we have just mapped our data. So let's just check and see what's happening now. Now, the next line of action is to, what? to add the search functionality. Okay, the next line of action is to add the search functionality. So let's just go and do that. Let's go to our form and then get a button for that and then so to do that let's just uh, use this particular range as our what search bar so we select it and then uh, let's just uh, change this to this let's right click it go to uh, format cells okay okay let's just use this one a bit this one will be okay for us or should we do that okay let's go to format cells then give it top and down border like uh, let's choose uh, this deep color once again so we choose uh, this and we give it top and down then here should be dotted this and that so we click on okay so let's make it grow up a bit okay it's okay we can squeeze this button a bit just Perfect. So we can just select this, then Control D, Control D, D as in dog. Okay. So we choose this. Let's give it this format. It. Let's go to format. And I think let's use this. So you can rename it to a search. Okay. Um, okay. Perfect. This okay. So this will be our search button okay and this this will be our search bar 
we can have another um, button here which is maybe for delete or whatever so now we're going to write macro to be able to search so i think we need to format this our search bar like search we put some some thin test inside here like that so to do that let's just bring this one down here a bit just as we did in our user form we're having some test inside like a very thin test to guide the user on what to do next okay so to do that let's just uh, first of all we need to write uh, a formula for that so we use this particular column and then say that so we say equal to into, into equal to okay if into bracket this particular range here is equal to empty okay that is empty string then comma then we want to re sorry before i do that let me write what i want to return first if i do that so let me do that let's come here and write something like uh, okay let's be here we'll say something like uh, enter search okay let's do that enter search okay perfect enter search so we have that oh is it okay okay enter search. that's whatever whatever you would want to put that i think that is your business okay i think it's okay so i say equal to there's a if into bracket this particular range equal to an empty string which which if there is nothing inside then comma then i want to return this else then i want it to be empty then i close the bracket then i press enter so we have that here okay so but now we want it to be inside here so you just uh, select it and then uh, go to write justify okay so let's just select this now use the uh, front arrow to move it straight and then we give it space okay perfect it's moving then we use right arrow then after i use the space bar to give more space it's inside then the last one double click over it again use the right arrow to move it Oh, shit. I think this is okay. This is too much. <laughs> okay, let's just then after that we bring it back a bit. Okay, it is okay. I think uh, let's move it, center it a bit. Okay, let's center it. This okay now. Now we we'll want to uh, this should be here. Okay. Oh, okay. I think it is center. Okay, it is okay. Yes, we should mind it. Okay, this one should control it rather. Okay, I think it's okay. Let's maintain it like that. Perfect, it's okay. Now I would want this to have it a very thin one. Okay, so let's just uh, choose this particular background color. Sorry, the the font rather and see has been. Too. Let's choose this font. It's a bit lighter. This what I selected. Okay, I've just selected where the formula is. And as you can see. The formula can be seen now, although it's there, like it can be seen, you can see that just hidden inside the text. So that's okay, that's what I want. So I choose the font, this particular font here. Perfect, it's okay, right? So we can hide here if we want. Mm -hmm. And just give it some quiet class. Okay, let's change the text white okay also gone so nobody can see it so that is what we want if you like you can just yes whatever so let's leave it like that let's my our business so let's move this straight here now so this is our search button so let's move straight to the back end and then write a sub routine or sub procedure to be able to use this button to search for our data so let's do that we go to the back end so we're going to create another sub routine here so it's a sub sorry a sub we call it data search perfect now here we're going to declare two variables that is x and y okay so you say what dim x as long perfect then you can see that it has just uh, okay that is dim x as long and then the second one say what uh, dim also what y as uh, long perfect perfect let me just call this, this perfect capital y as long perfect now 
we are going to set our x to be the last row with what data okay we are going to set this x to be the last row with data and then y is going to be what the various columns y is going to hold the various column from column 1 to the column 12 where our data is stored okay that is on sheet 2 so let's first of all assign a value to x so we say x okay equal to what sheet 2 sheet 2 like i said we are going to set assign a value which is what the last row with data not without data with data to x because we can't search where there is no data we search where there is data in the previous one where we add we determine the last row without data because you can only place data where there is no data right now here we are going to determine the last row with data because we can only search where there is data okay so we do that so it's a sheet two dot fringe sorry dot fringe then we tab it over the fringe into bracket then that is the column a nine 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 you can put any values there of your just into bracket sorry dot and sorry dot and then bracket open an uh, excel app okay Bra sorry bracket close dot what row dot row then tab it over so we are done this one determines the last row with data okay if you want to determine the last row without data that is why we add what plus one so it will skip the last row with data and go to the last the next row without data that is that so we have assigned x to the last row with data take note with data perfect so now we are going to use with a with a y what have we assigned y to let's go to the data sheet we have assigned y to this particular column so this is y1 y2 y3 y4 y5 y6 y7 y8 up to y12 okay so that is what y is doing here y is holding the various column for us so this is y1 y2 to the last one let's go let's go we're going to use for loop to look through the various what columns okay so we say what for, for y equal to what one to what x you will understand this so we say what next y okay like i said anytime you uh, use a for loop and then you call a variable here is the next that variable perfect i explain this what i'm saying is that for y equal to what one to x why x here not number x here is a number which number is that that is the row number with data because we have already assigned x to what the last row with data so that particular row let me just go to the data sheet and you understand let's assume that this is the last row with data so our x right now is four so here right now if you want to set within these two data here is going to be what uh, for y equal to what? one to four because right now our our x is what four that is the last row with, with data here let's assume okay what if our data carries up to maybe somewhere here up to maybe 17 then that that means that our x is what 17 if our data is somewhere 22 up to, from here to 20 it means our x is right now what 22 but right now our x is what 4 so we are looping through 1 to what 4 that is from here to this one where there is data okay so this so we are saying that for y equal to 1 to x we want to do something what do we want to do we want to use if statement to compare okay we want to use if statement to compare some two values to be able to search you need to compare what you are searching to what is in the database if what you are searching matches with what is in the database then you can return what you are looking for from the database and use for whatever purpose that that you, you intend to search uh, use it for right okay so that is what we are going to do here so we say what if if what she two she two dot cells okay let me tab it over into bracket y comma one i'll explain dot value okay equal to what u case i'll explain don't worry into bracket sheet one bracket close okay sorry sheet one dot dot range let me tab it over sheet one dot range uh let me open this bracket which of the range on sheet one let me confirm that range before we come back to you this is sheet one this the range is b16 okay this range is b16 take note of that b16 let me just determine that b16 let me just go back 
dot range b sixteen dot value then sorry I need to bring any okay Okay, okay, okay. I need to close this bracket. I've opened two brackets here, one and two. So I need to close the second one here. Perfect. It should be closed. Okay. Perfect. So we have an if here. Let me explain this line of code. What we are saying is this. First of all, let's check the range I just referred. Our search range or the search bar we call it is in what range B16. What we are trying to do is we want to compare what we are searching here to what is in the database within this column, that is column A. Okay, within this particular column, which means we are searching using what the full name. That is what you need to understand. We are searching using what the full name. So to do that, we are comparing what, what we are putting inside here, inside this range, to what is here. If what we put here matches with whatever name we have here, they want to return all the data for that person on this particular ranges. The person's date of birth, date of admission, gender, and everything should appear here on click of this particular button. That is our objective. Perfect. Let's go to the back end once again and explain better. So we say what if she two dot cells where is the she two dot cells this this is she two okay dot cells which of the cells are we referring to so y1 sorry y1 dot value which is y1 the first column i told you the first column is what y1 okay y1 any of this particular names here we have that is what we are talking about so y1 dot value we are talking of the values located in this y1 column that is the names that is what we are talking about let's go back if she two dot cells y1 dot value if any of those full names is equal to what this means this u case means what uppercase why uppercase now the names we have entered here are in capital or are in let's say in capital letters right we use capital letters to enter this so if you want to search here Without the UK function I've added there, what you need to do is to make sure that you enter exactly the same thing that is inside here. It should also be in capitals, else it wouldn't match. But with the UK function I've added here, it can convert it towards small letters at the same time, capital letters. And what it means is that you can search, although you entered the data using capital letters, but you can search. By combining both capital and small letters, and it will still return the same thing. So that is what the UK function here does. We also have another function called the L keys. With the L keys, where do we use L keys? We use L keys when you use when you enter the names with what? Maybe lowercase or maybe camel keys by capitalizing the first letter of every name. Okay. Then in that case, here should be what L keys. So that it's even if you want to search and use capital letters, it should still work what do what work for you so in this case we have used what uppercase so we use the what uk function to what change it so that we can search using both capital and then small letters or capital letters or small letters whichever search criteria you use the only thing is that it should be able to match with the same name irrespective of the 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 the, the, the case uh, or, or maybe uh, whether it is capital or small it should be able to work that is what the uk function here is doing for us so if it matches with what you can sheets one dot twin b16 what it means is that if it matches with this then we want to do something if what is here matches with what is here that is b16 dot twin right dot value then we want to do something it means whatever we are searching here has matched with one of these names here if it matches with sally siraj then we want to return sally siraj what full name into this particular range and then return Sally's range what date of birth into this particular range, and then all this data here. If it matches with Rahman Rashida, 
they want to retain Rashida's details on this particular range here from the first data to the last one for that particular name. That is what we are talking about. So let's go to the back end and then continue with our syntax. So I believe you understand. If she told ourselves Y1, I mean the first column on the data sheet where we have the full names. If the, one of the names matches with what is in the word B16, that is a search bar, then we want to retain that person's data within that particular range on the form so that you can see it. So how do we retain that? So we say what? If it matches, then what? Sheet one dot range into brackets b3 dot what sorry dot value equal to what she two dot cells into bracket y comma one into bracket dot what value i explain this what if what is in the data oh sorry if wait, when what is on the database that is the names we have in the column a on the database sheet matches with any of the names we type in the search bar and we want to retain that particular person's names data so we are going to start with what the person's full name first so the person's full name should be here and that person's date of birth should be here so with this first line we just type here is the full name command here so this will keep the full name in this range that is the b3 let me just show you it will return that here after this i will demonstrate for you to see with that with, with that single line of code i will demonstrate that it's how it's going to be so let's quickly go back so we say what then if that if it matches with this line of code we are comparing what is in the search bar to what is in the in the in the y1 columns with any of the full names that we have there if it matches they want to return that person's what first name here so sheets one dot ring b3 where is it one dot ring b3 dot value which one are we talking about we are talking about what this what we are saying is that this particular range the value of it should be that person's full name here but value should be equal to what she two dot cells y1 dot value it should be equal to that person's that we type here's name that same name should return here for that particular person okay that is what we are talking about now let's try that and see so we have sally siraj Let's come back here and search Sally Siraj. So far, our search button hasn't gotten its macro. So we go to assign macro, then we use data set. Okay. Now, if I should click this, it should return Sally Siraj here. Perfect. I pray you understand. Let me quickly go back. Understanding is the most important thing here. What we did was we, we just compared what is here. So you can see that what is here now matches with what what is here so because of that it has returned that person's name for us here with this line of code because we say what if the condition here is met if it's able to match with any of the names there then sheet one dot ring b3 dot value what is the ring b3 holding the ring b3 on sheet one is holding the full name so we want to assign that value and that value should come from what she two dot cells y1 it means it should return that person's full name straight to what ring b3 let's confirm that please this is the ring b3 so we return that person's full name here for us now we are left with that person's what date of birth date of admission gender class form and then name so to do that we we'll only copy this and then add it so let's confirm this date of birth is which range b5 date of admission is which range b7 agenda is what b B uh, sorry, gender is what as agenda. Gender is what B9. And then class or form is what B11. But this name is what and then the rest, you know, you know the, 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 the ranges, you know the references to the ranges, right? So that is what we are talking about. Now let's quickly go back. And don't forget, this is what Y1. So date of birth. When we come to this one, two, the date of birth is going to be what Y2. It's going to be what Y3 is Y4, Y5. So when we copy this syntax here, this line of code here. Control C to copy this. Click here, then Control V to paste. What do you think the editing is going to be? The second one here is for date of birth. Okay. So what is going to happen is, is we're going to edit this to what? For date of birth, the range is what? B5. And on the sheet 2, it's going to be what? Y1. This is sheet 2. 
chip two is now what y1 so we change that place to a uh, sorry y2 rather because full name is what y1 is a very what y2 that is on chip two so let's go back to the source code and do that so this should be what y2 now perfect now if i should go back there again and say it will now return the date of birth through for sally sirat again so let's quickly go back there and confirm declare what is here declare what is here let me retype it again Salis sirat if i should run it perfect it has returned its name and then date of birth so what do you think we're going to do we're just going to copy the rest of the code and then paste paste and then edit perfect simple as that so let's just select this try to center it here select this try to center it and select this as well we want to center this as well perfect so now let's clear this and then clear this as well clear from here let's try searching for the second one so what? rahman Rashida. okay let's search that's return the name and then the date of birth perfect so that is that if there is another person's name there you should be able to work, do that oh, so that's yeah, let's clear this let's, let's decrease the font size to okay it's okay now perfect that's okay good so let's quickly go back to the source code and copy and paste now so yes it is now proceed to copy so this is going to be for what if you can guess this is going to be for date of admission eh, sorry date of admission that is what b7 so it means here is going to be what b7 that is on sheet one you are going b7 when you go to sheet two it's going to be what y3 date of birth and so here is going to be what y3 so that in that order so you can just do that by yourself now i think now you should understand this 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 i'm not even counting i want them up to 12 okay so be counting for me <laughs> i don't know if it is up to one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven, eleven, eleven. last one 12. so b5 so here should be what b7 b9 b11 b13 here should be what y3 here should be what y4 should be what y5 here should be what y sorry y6 should be what y7 here should be what y8 here should be what y9 here should be 10 11 12 perfect and when we come here the next one one two three four five six the first six is for uh, name to what father's uh, name right then the last six of this is going to be what father's contact what address which is what d3 through to what d13 so we're going to edit here too like that so d3 so here's going to be d3 d3 d5 d7 d9 d11 then d13 now if we should go back and search it will return the person's full data for us okay so that is that now let's quickly go back and do that and see what's going to happen now so if we do that we would want to um Go back to our phone check this so you see let me use a um, small letters and see so let's return it the effect you can see whether small letters or if you combine any of them you should be able to do so it has return the persons what of the address don't we have rashida's address i can see address being here so let's let's figure that out maybe there's there's some been mistakes in our data or in our syntax let's confirm that okay let's before we do that let's just check something one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve okay d three five d seven nine eleven thirteen 
we should be okay so we also okay let me quickly go back to our one two three four five six okay one two three four five six let's go to the database sheet and confirm our shader has address rights and the father's name is uh, sorry the father's name is Yahya Isa and how come the father's name is in place of other let's confirm that okay and see the father's name there there okay let's check here first. G3 and then G13 okay uh, it should be from the center let's check let's confirm the role good this is the problem so you can see that sheet one dot ring b13 b13 holds what let's confirm you can see i've made a mistake instead of d i put b okay let's see what the p13 holds and let's see what's happening there so that we can understand this better uh, b13 this is b13 b13 holds what the the address so since we have assigned this particular ring as that it has given it to it so that is where the mistake comes from okay so let's quickly go back and correct that it should rather be d13 okay d13 so now it should return everything well for us without any problem so let's clear this control and select this right click and clear content perfect okay so after that we can then um, research again perfect that's written everything perfectly and let's search for the second person sally siraj perfect so you can see that our set criteria and everything is now working so i think done with our search adding our search button in our next lesson we're going to go ahead and add a delete button updates what's the name um, reset close and blah 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 to the end so our form should by then take the complete shape of how a form should be so i think yeah, that is that i pray you understand now the idea is this i would want us to can easily write another um line of code to always hide this particular uh as the name uh add button so that anytime we set it should hide so that and the reason being is that after searching there are few things you can do to the data that you search for you the only thing you can do is to add if you click on add it to it will add the same data back to the database like this if i click on add let's go back and check it has added another word let's check sally siraj again so because of this you know we have to guide the user guide is a perfect because of this you want to do what uh, uh, do what make sure this is what hidden anytime we search so that it doesn't show okay we want to make sure it's hidden anytime we search so that it doesn't show we can do that with just a single line of code so that whenever we search it's, it, it should hide okay let's do that so we quickly go back here so scroll and see that uh, after returning all the data for that particular person, when the search criteria or condition is met, so we say what? Sheet one dot. Okay, to do that, we need to, uh, first of all, name this particular button. We need to name it. So to name it, let's uh, press and hold control on the keyboard and select it. And let's go back here and then give it a name like add btn sorry add btn meaning add button after that just press enter if you don't press enter it will not rename it press and hold control on the keyboard and we select it again you can see the name appears now instead of the previous uh, information we saw about the button so now it has a name add btn perfect so the name of the shape is add btn so let's go back to the source code and do that so we say what after returning this data we want to do something to that button so what sheet sorry yeah that is sheet it's one dot what shapes so in this case those buttons we refer them to as what shapes okay into bracket what's the name of the shape add 
etn okay dot visible it visibility is equal to what mso uh, force meaning it should hide perfectly invisibility what, what this line of code means is that shift one dot shapes what is the name of the shape add bt that's the add button not visible invisibility should be what force meaning it shouldn't show it shouldn't be visible so let's quickly go back there and set it is gonna happen as now it's it's enabled so we can just select this and then do what uh, we can say rahman rashid okay let's search. so you can see that it's hidden so with this you can have the opportunity to us sorry click on it to add the data again uh, that is that that is that so i think uh, I will say thank you very much for watching. This is how we add search criteria to our form. But this particular cell based form, I see, not any other. When we get to the other ones, we can see how we're going to work around that as well. So I say thank you very much for watching. So we can go ahead and then save your work, save it perfectly. So our next lesson, I say thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.